I escaped the clutches of my ex-husband after he left me in the hospital with bullet holes. Guys, my name's Mr. Redito, and I have one story for you today, but this story is one of the wildest stories I've ever read. It involves drama, abuse, and all sorts of relationship red flags. This one ends in a restraining order that has a trip to the emergency room. If you guys don't know who I am, I read daily stories of some of the most dramatic soap opera worthy stories found on the world wide web. Let's go ahead and hop directly into this story, I can't wait. I made some mistakes in my youth, and the biggest one was getting married to my ex-husband. We both live in Russia, and I got married to him years ago. We had an honest and loving relationship in the beginning, but after a while, I had everything but my husband's attention. And when I got out of his clutches, he still wanted to keep me chained at him. I'm a 38 year old female and I had to go into hiding because of my ex-husband who's 40. About 4 years ago, I found out that my husband had been cheating on me with my best friend. The usual warning signs were there, coming home late from work, sneaky phone calls, etc. But I decided not to suspect him, thinking that he was just working hard as his job was very demanding. I tried speaking to his mother about it, but she scolded me, saying that I had to be grateful because he was working to provide for me. I had known my best friend Vanya for many years, and our families were close. She knew everything that happened in my life, and I also knew what happened in her life. One night, my husband told me that he would be working late, so I decided on a whim to make him some homemade food. Normally, he ordered takeaway, and when I visited his office, I would call his PA, but she had already gone home. I hated for him to eat junk food as it was bad for his health, so then I decided to surprise him with some homemade food. But I was the one surprised because I walked in on my husband and my best friend in a very compromising position. I was pissed. I ended up having a fight with her and wrecking most of his office in a fit of rage. He did not come home that night because I told him I do not want to see him. However, he offered countless excuses. Even though he tried everything to get me back, I could not forgive him for what he's done. I asked him how long it's been going on. He said it's been a year. He even resorted to trying to get my mother to convince me to stay with him. He knew that she liked him. He was a smooth talker and she was old-fashioned. She told me that it was not right for me to give up our marriage over something so small because he had always taken care of me. Just because he earned a lot of money and spoiled me did not mean I was going to forgive him. He had broken my trust after everything we've been through. I'd always been a loyal wife, staying at home when he did not want to work, and he does this? He claims to be sorry, even during the divorce proceedings, telling me that she did not mean anything to him. She, on the other hand, was very humiliated and shunned in the community, and she ended up leaving. Her husband left as well, but he surprisingly got more support than I did. I ignored every one of her calls. She and my husband had both participated in breaking my trust. He tried everything to stall the proceedings. Making work excuses, then he had to be in court, etc. He even tried to get my friends to talk to me and convince me not to divorce him, but it was just too much for me. Many people also do not support me, saying that I was too old to start over, but I had a degree and I had started working again. We never had any kids, which I was grateful for, because I wanted nothing that would tie me to this man. I refused to be the typical wife who accepted infidelity. I gave up a lot to be with him and he never appreciated me. When we were married, he would make it a point that he was the sole provider. But I was happy. I had to be happy because at least he loved me. Despite his stalling, I had valid reasons for divorcing him. And soon, I was a free woman. In the settlement, I got the house and a large sum of money. Despite him threatening to set his lawyers on me to make sure that I receive nothing because I refused to take him back. I sold the house 
I never even liked it anyways. It was too big and reminded me of him. And I used the money to start a little business on the side. I've not been working for several years after we got married, because he was a traditional man who wanted me at home, so I did not have much. But after I caught him cheating, I started working again. I gave him back all his credit cards and started providing for myself. Unfortunately, he was less than pleased with how things worked out. He promised me several material possessions, even going as far as buying me a quote, expensive necklace, which I gave back to him. He could not accept the fact that we were no longer together, calling me his wife in public and messaging me at inappropriate times at night. Like my mom, he did not believe in divorce, saying I would be his wife forever. I knew him. We had been together, yes, for a long time. After all, he did not give up until he got what he wanted. He did not want me back because of love. He was just used to me being his property. In the end, I had enough, and I threatened to lay a charge of harassment against him, and I also got a restraining order. In the end, he left me alone and we both moved on with our lives. But I think that the way he suddenly moved on was suspicious. He got some beautiful young girl that he would not stop showing off. But I did not care. If he thought it would make me jealous, then oh, he was wrong. Over the years, we did not have any contact with each other. I was barely in town most of the time. Well, because of business. And he seemed happy with his young new girlfriend. Either way, I did not get back on the dating scene for a while as I was focusing on work. However, I ended up meeting a good man who I was skeptical in the beginning because I had trust issues. He was a couple years older than me but still looked good for his age. He owned a small business and was an honest man. A second marriage was not on my plans but after dating for a year, I agreed to marry him. We saw my ex several times, but he said he was happy for me, and I believed him. It was a small town, so it was completely unavoidable for us to bump into each other. That was the reason I decided that our wedding was going to be out of town, with only a few people in attendance. However, sometime before we tied the knot, I got a call from my ex-husband. It was strange because we did not make it a habit to talk to each other. The restraining order had expired and since he had not harassed me for some time, I did not get another one. He told me that I could not marry my boyfriend because he was still in love with me. He said that he never met a woman as loyal as me and he regretted cheating on me and losing me. That young girl he was dating had cheated on him with someone her own age after using him for his money. I told him that people reap what they sow and he promised me that he was a changed man and would be a better partner for me than my fiancé. He said that he had more money and could provide better for me. I let him know once again that material possessions were not a sign of real love. Finally, he promised me that he would do everything to make sure I was his wife again. I dropped the phone call. Annoyed at his inability to leave me alone, I was very fed up with him, and I told my fiancé about the call. However, the man did not stop there. He was disrespectful enough to send me flowers at my workplace. And then, as if that was not enough, he pretended to be a client who wanted to do business with my company. However, when I got there, it was him. He had rented the whole restaurant for us. I was very angry and decided that I needed to get a restraining order once again. My fiancé was upset by this and ended up getting into a fist fight with my ex-husband. We decided to leave town earlier and stay in town where we were going to get married. After our wedding, we were going to move away. It was getting too much and that man would not let me go in peace. Even with the restraining order... I made sure not to let the location of the wedding known until a few days before. I was starting to get a bit scared, but my friends told me that it was normal to get cold feet. I guess I had not that feeling in so many years. Finally, the day came for me to get married to my fiancé. As an extra precaution, we hired security to keep my ex out of there if he dared to show, which I would not put past him. 
I blocked him and changed my number as soon as I left town, just in case he tried to track me down. He had a couple of connections and in this country, ugh, money talks. Everything was going smoothly and the security was doing their job. However, I saw a man who should have been with security come towards us before we even said our vows. Then there was a commotion when he took out a gun and shot twice in our direction. Both of those bullets hit me, one in the chest and the other in the stomach. I felt myself going down and people making a lot of noise. I could not breathe. All I felt was the blood pulling into my palm of my hand. And then I passed out. But I could hear people calling my name still. I thought that I felt someone lift me, but when I tried to speak, I could not. I got to know what happened next from my fiancé and family who were in attendance. A big, intimidating guy came to the wedding and knocked all the security guards out. And then he had a shot in our direction, narrowly missing my fiancé. And because I somehow moved, I don't remember this, the, both the bullets got into me. The shooter ran away and everyone was panicking and attending to me, so they could not catch him. An ambulance was called and I was sent to the hospital, but on the way they said that my pulse was very weak. And then I had to go into surgery. Everyone thought I was dead because of how I had bled on the aisle. I was in surgery for many hours and my heart nearly stopped. The bullet that hit my chest narrowly missed my heart. But the other one that hit my stomach caused a bit of damage. At some point, I completely lost consciousness because of the blood loss. They had to do a lot of work on me and afterward, they put me in an induced coma so that I would recover better. They were afraid that if I woke up, excessive movements would rupture something. If it was not for my thick traditional wedding dress which my mom... We reconciled after she saw how my ex was harassing me. Well, she convinced me to wear it. If I had worn the dress I wanted to, I'd probably be a goner. Either way, my fiancé, who had been nearly my husband when this all started, realized that it was a serious matter. It was clear that someone wanted to kill us. But who could it be? His thoughts went to business rivals. That was not far-fetched thought, but... As some businessmen are involved in dodgy dealings, while I was in my coma and slowly recovering, he refused to let anyone except my mother visit. Rumors were flying around that I had passed away. He did not do anything that set them right, as he wanted time to try and find the shooter. He worked closely with the police and eyewitnesses for months to try to find out what had happened that day. I recovered, but I was put into protection for my safety. They were afraid that the shooter would come back. I heard that my ex was busy sympathizing with my death, etc. He even held a memorial service for me, all to try and gain sympathy from people. I knew he would never miss an opportunity to make everything about himself. He was such an opportunistic man. But then, a year after I'd been shot, there was a breakthrough. They had put posters of the shooter all over the place from the security feed that they finally acquired. And through investigation, they found the shooter. He was a man that they have been looking for for many years in relation to other murders. And what did all these murders have in common? They were mostly linked to spouses allegedly ordering hits on each other. Among other things, I know most of the details because my fiancé was working closely with the detectives. He was determined to find out who wanted to kill me so that he can move on with our lives. They caught the man, but he was in another country. However, Russia has an extradition treaty with that country, so they managed to get him back. He had got a lot of money doing that job, which was probably how he had the money to run away. After extensive interrogation, they managed to get a name out of him. And I should have known it was him. After all... He had been obsessed with me for a very long time. The shooter said that he had been hired by my ex to kill me and my fiancé. He pretended to be a part of the security because my ex had bought off the security company. He knew where I was no matter how hard we tried to hide from him. Fortunately, he was unsuccessful in killing my fiancé because I moved in front of him. So, I got both the bullets. 
He had been told to finish off the job if we did not die, but the investigation was now public. I was presumed dead still, and my fiancé was looking for the shooter. So, he only got half his pay, which was why he confessed. He had everything. The conversation between them and the receipt of money into an offshore account, etc. He might have been some macho gangster, but the Russian police do not play around. I remembered that there had been rumors about my ex being involved in illegal dealings when we were still together. I had brushed it off at the time, thinking that the people who warned me were lying, but he had been under suspicion for illegal activities for years. The shooter's confession was going to help build a strong case against him, and he would go to jail. Hopefully for many years. However, it seemed that the police were slow in getting to him. Somehow, he had been warned that they were looking for him under suspicion for the shooting. Probably from someone on his payroll. So, by the time they were on their way to arrest him, he had skipped the country. <laughs> and you know how people talk. There were many theories of where he's gone, but the most credible one was that he had skipped to another country and changed his name. I was so relieved when I found out that he was gone, but I was also scared that he would come back one day to finish me off. I cannot believe that I've once been married to this guy. Now that he's gone, I was able to come out of hiding. Close friends and family knew that I was still alive, it was him that we wanted to fool into thinking I was dead, so he would not try to quote, finish me off. He always had a messed up view of love and would not allow me to be happy. I got trauma counseling and therapy for the shooting and my anxiety of the shooter would come back. The shooter was sentenced to a long time in prison and when I was in the same room as him, giving my testimony, I was shaking scared. Now that everything had settled down, it was now time to finally get married. After such a delay, we got married and I wore a traditional dress once again. I was not taking any chances. We went ahead with the plan of moving away after we got married and he might have been gone and assumed that I was dead, so I liked it to stay that way. I did not know how it would remain a secret for long, but I did not want him to ever know I'm alive. My new husband and I got married with no interruptions, sold everything, and now we live in another part of the country. I don't even know where to start with that story. I told you guys that that was one of the wildest stories I've read in quite some time. I'm just glad OP finally got out of the clutches of her ex-husband, and I hope he stays in jail for a very long time. He seemed like a very bad, manipulative person, and I'm glad he can't abuse anyone else. I hope OP has a great life with her new husband and she never has to worry about that creep again. Guys, if you have any similar stories that you would like to add, go ahead and drop them down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, do show some support and love for the channel. The best way to do that is by smashing that like button. I hope you guys have an amazing night or day wherever you are in this world and Mr. Redito will catch you in tomorrow's video.